and stand up as we begin to worship. Psalms 19, 4 says, You blew me when the law of your life. I sing for joy of the brother of your life. I thank this morning that we can have out the great name of all of us as we worship. Sing with me. Praise God for the Oh, 
Christ, that he is our hope and glory, that we do have our faith in him. And I'm not saying not be cautious and throwing things into the wind. I'm saying just don't be living in fear because God is on the throne. He has got everything under control. And we should be giving everything over to him and just, just laying our, our prayers and our concerns and our worries at his feet. And, and you know, we're sharing some different stories and things that are happening due to miscommunication with our kids going back to school. And, I mean, there's there's just a fear, you know. If so-and-so has the symbols or so-and-so coughs or throws up, I might be sent home, you know. Because my kids like school. So, I mean, they're like, they're terrified that they're going to be sent home because somebody next to them is, is sick. So, I pray for our community and our, our state and, and everything else that they just don't let the fear overtake them. And that is where we're at. I mean, we're letting the fear of something that we can't see overwhelm us. And we ought to be looking at the hope of the Lord God who we can see in everybody's life and what we can see in our world. And that's who we should be putting our hope in. But I want to go ahead and just start off a little bit of prayer again this morning over this. Lord, I just pray right now that this is all about you. Lord, that we will be convicted to give you everything that we have, Lord, that we will be inspired by this woman this day, Lord, that she gave everything. And Lord, let us let us not hold back. Let us not give our leftovers. Let us not just, Lord, just give us everything we have that we can offer to you, Lord, that we can give it over to you and that our life is yours. And Lord, let that be our prayer today as we look and see how this woman in this passage, Lord, just gave everything over to you and threw everything into the wind, Lord, and just gave everything to you, and by doing so, blessed and anointed her Savior. Lord, I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we've been going, of course, all through Mark, and as you know, you've heard over and over again for over a year and a half now, the book of Mark is about what? It's about a testimony to say that this is the Son of God, that this is the Messiah, and he's the whole group. The whole purpose of the book is going to prove that he is the anointed one, the one that we are looking for, the one that we've been searching for. And, and we're getting into a, a, the Passion Week. Uh, I misquoted last week, and some of you may or not ca caught it, and thank you for not correcting me, but we've started the Passion Week or way back, and we're all into this. These things are, while we read it, we may think that, oh, this happened over a long period, but this is actually happening within a short relative amount of time as they're getting ready for the Passover. And that's where we find Jesus today is that he has moved back over into Bethany, that he was on the Mount of Olives, he's moved to Bethany, and he is here to celebrate the Passover meal, which is, in essence, for those of us to truly understand it, is really the Independence Day for the Jewish people. It was their, their 4th of July that they were saved and escorted out of Egypt, by Moses and the, and the Passover came and they, they, they had the unleavened bread celebration and it was all done in remembrance of God saving them and leading them out of captivity into the promised land. And that the Passover lamb was given at that time, which is awesome in the symbolism as we know now who Jesus Christ is and being the sacrificial lamb for all of our sin, that they slain a, a perfect lamb and they painted the doorpost so that the final plague or the final judgment that was coming down on them of the firstborn dying there in Egypt, that it said what? When God said, I'm going to send my angel down, and when they come, if they see the blood, they will pass you by. And what's so exciting about that symbolism, what is so exciting about understanding what the Passover is and who Jesus Christ truly is, is that it doesn't matter who was in the house. It didn't matter what kind of sin that you may have had upon your life. It didn't matter what was going on if you were not perfect because everybody was imperfect, I promise you. But their faith was in what? The blood of the Lamb. And because the blood of the, they put their faith in the blood of that Lamb and they made it known on their doorpost, which for them could have been a sign of being, they're going to kill everybody because, hey, you're putting your faith not in Egypt, not in the Pharaoh, but in the blood of God. You're putting it in that, and he will pass you by. So the thing is, Jesus Christ, being our perfect Messiah, 
is that the blood of Jesus Christ, when you accept Christ as your Savior, that is why we sing, are you washed in the blood? Because when we're washed in the blood of the Savior, it doesn't matter. Our sins are gone. And when we stand before God, He will pass by on the judgment that we rightly deserve and the sin that we have in our life. And that is the whole purpose of celebrating the Passover is that the blood of the Lamb saved them and freed them. And that is what our hope is in Jesus Christ. And so while the setting here is the Passover meal is about to happen, and the Jewish people were getting ready and set for the celebration and remembrance, unfortunately the chief priest, the, the holy men of God, who should have been focused on this celebration, instead were getting their plot ready to kill Christ. Their whole time, you know, we, we go all the way back to chapter 4 of Mark, when it said that they were indignant and ready to start killing him. So all their plans are now building up to this. They're, they're getting ready for this time, and it's all coming together for them, and they are chomping at the bit to get rid of this one man because he challenges them. He shows them their faults. They're missing it. They miss it. He's amongst them, and they miss it. But in the light of all this evil that's going on, there is a light of a single woman who gives her all to express her love for the Messiah. So read with me now. We're going to read all the way through 11, and then I'm going to go back and break it down for you. So it's 14, 1 through 11. It said, Now the Passover and the unleavened bread were two days away, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to seize him, meaning Jesus, by stealth. And kill him. For they were saying, not during the festival, otherwise we might we might be a riot of people. While he was in Bethany, at the home of Simon the leper, and reclining at the table, there came a woman with an alabaster vial of very costly perfume of pure nard. And she broke the vial and poured it over his head. But some were indignant, remarking to one another, Why has this perfume been wasted? For the perfume might have been sold for 300 denarii and money given to the poor, and they were scolding, scolding her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you bother her? She has done a good deed to me. For you have always had the poor with you. Whenever you wish, you can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body before the burial. Truly I say to you, whenever the gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be spoken in memory of her. Then Jesus Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest in order to betray him to them. And they were glad to hear this, and they promised to give him money, and he began seeking how to betray him at the opportune time. The first thing I want you to see this morning you know, I asked the question, the title is, are we giving our all? And the thing I want you to see that this woman did was a, an act of sacrificial love. In verse 3, it said that she came, well, while we were with me at the home of Simon the leper, we in the chair, there came a woman with an alabaster vial, a very costly perfume, and pure nard, and she broke the vial and poured it over his head. While Jesus was resting there, a woman that we know from Acts of the Gospel of John in chapter 12 is actually Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus. This is the woman that has come in and comes in front of everyone and worships her Lord unashamedly. She, he's in the middle. They've had dinner and he's resting and she just walks right in in the midst, which is not what a woman is really supposed to do. She comes in there. She breaks the vial over his head. And also know in John that she then takes down her hair and she washes her feet. And she gave him her best at that moment. She didn't care what anybody else was going to say. She didn't care what anybody else thought of her. She went straight into Christ and gave her what she could. She wasn't a woman of rich. We know that from the scripture. She didn't have a lot of things, but she gave God her best. So I ask ourselves, are we giving God our all, or are we just giving God our leftovers? Many times, and one right here included, we give God leftovers. Instead of starting our day off with prayer and giving him the best and the first thing, the first fruits of the morning after a great night's sleep, 
or maybe a restful night's sleep. Maybe that is a time for prayer. We get up in the morning instead of giving God the morning day, the morning sun. We wait to the end of the day when we're exhausted. We have spent everything. And we may even wait till we lay down in the bed. And many times, and I've done it, fell asleep praying. Forgetting what is we're there for. God is asking, are we giving him our best? Are we giving him everything that we're supposed to give him? We, don't, we many times give our leftovers to the church. Many times instead of giving our first fruits, which we have seen from the, the widow woman earlier, we give our leftovers to the church. Rather than giving the first fruits, we're committing the same thing that Cain did. He didn't give his first fruits, his best fruits to God. He gave his leftovers. We're not giving our best. This sacrificial love, she went and gave everything, not caring anything in the world, what anybody else thought. And that's what we can learn from Mary this morning. In the light of everything else that's going on, all the scheming that is behind to get rid of Christ, Mary is the bright spot. She got down on her knees and she washed, she let her hair down, which was not supposed to be acceptable at that time, and washed the feet of her Savior, which we will see Christ do a little later when he washes the feet of his disciples. That was a sign of being humble and being a servant, because that's what servants were supposed to do. The servants washed the feet, not the master. So she came in and put herself at the feet of Jesus as she has done in the past. She was always at the feet of Jesus wanting to learn from him, wanting to soak everything she could from him, from his teaching. She broke all the cultural traditions. Why? Because the cultural tra traditions was keeping her from blessing him. Many times we allow ourselves to get too concerned of what other people think of us when we don't want to worship Christ. We don't want to go to him. There should be nothing that separates us from wanting to give all of our best to Jesus. Our Mary's example of love is exactly everything Christ has been teaching up to this moment, Mary gave in that instant. What we have been covering for weeks, Christ has said. When we started back in the book of Mark, when Jesus started his teaching, we said, he said, don't let the house of God be a house of show, let it be a house of substance. When he entered the week of Jerusalem, he went straight to the church, he looked around, and it was magnificent, and he walked off, and he told them, here is a church full of show, but no substance. Folks, and I talked and preached that Sunday about how many of our churches today are all about the show and less of the substance, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're more about the lights, we're more about the fame, we're more about getting our attention and everything else going and doing the great thing that we lack the substance. Christ says, don't be about show, be about substance. Mary showed substance by giving her all to Jesus in front of everybody. The other thing that Jesus talked about is that he went back to the house and they were all made in a den of thieves, right? So he made a whip and he drove them out, saying, this is a house of worship and prayer. Mary did that. She worshipped the Messiah that she knew her Christ, her leader, her Lord. It wasn't about being a thief. She gave everything. She wasted nothing. The thieves were in there taking money from people, making it again, God's house. A house of nothing. But she came and gave everything to him. We talked about when God was, was challenged, or Jesus was challenged, and saying, you know, by the, the challenges of what should we do? Should we give to God or give to Caesar? And Caesar said, give to God what is God and what to Caesar the Caesar. And so she gave to God. That's the example we're seeing in her life today, in her act. When Jesus asked what was the greatest commandment, he said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and your strength. And when we preached and talked about that, we talked about strength. Strength meant what? And your everything, every substance about you, anything else that you are striving, it was a, a force of all that you have within you. Being like we talked about in sport where you have all that heart, where you're giving everything for the victory, everything that you have, every ounce of of your being, you're to love the Lord your God with, and she did. Everything. She gave everything. 
He challenged what we talked about, the relationship to have with God. That we're to have a personal and intimate relationship with him and not caring what anybody else says. He says many times, yes, she did this in public. She did a public display of her affection to Jesus Christ. And Christ says, what? Well, you know, we need to be praying in, in private with him and have a personal relationship. My point is she had a personal relationship with Jesus because she wanted to anoint him personally. And the only way that she could do it was right then. She showed that. She showed that we are to trust God with all of our finances like the widow did. She, the widow, and her widow might, Jesus pointed out, gave more in that two little pennies that she gave than everybody else in the room because she put her full faith in God at that moment. Again, Mary showing and assuming the same thing. She gave everything she had that she could muster to him. You know, and we'll get to a minute what that was all about. But she gave everything, and she was giving her all to her Savior. And the thing was, she didn't worry about what anybody else thought of her. Nothing. There have been times in my life that, you know, the worship time has come, and, and you're in the house of God, and yet I wanted to stifle the Holy Spirit. I was afraid to stand up and lift my hand to God and sing, or I was afraid to call out to God like this because I was afraid everybody around me would think that I was just being showy or I was being, and, and I'm telling you, it took a while before I realized I don't care what y'all think. I want to reach up like an infant to his daddy wanting to be held in his arms. When I'm lifting up praises to him, I'm looking to the heavens saying, Daddy, I love you. I want to be with you. Just as all of us who had children, there's nothing like the little one coming up to you with their big blue eyes or big brown eyes, big green eyes. They come up, Daddy, what are you going to do? What? Walk away? No. That's the moment that God will reach to pick you up and hold you. Because it came down to, I didn't care no more what anybody else in the church thought about me and my, my relationship and worshiping God. I don't care. Because it's not about me and you. It's about me and Him. And if I love Him, I'm going to show my love for my God. I'm going to show my love for Jesus because He saved me. He took me out of the ashes. He took me out of the field of my sin. And He has given me for the rest of my life that I've been that I have freedom. And that I can come to him and say, Daddy, forgive me. I have failed you. And he will. That God is there when I've gone through my troubles. And God has been there in my failures. And God has been there to lift me up and encourage me. It may have been through my wife. It may have been through my church. He has been there through other people. And I give God the credit. Because he brought people into my life when I needed it. And he gave me the words I needed and the lifting and the inspiration. That is my God. So I'm going to worship him just like Mary did. She did not care. She reached out to her Lord and Savior and she gave her all and didn't care what anybody else thought. She let her hair down. She washed his feet and said, he is my Savior. I anointed him. I promise. That if you give everything over to him, he will not fail you. You will be challenged. You will wonder sometimes what's going on. That maybe your prayers are not being answered the way you want them to be answered. But I promise you, it's coming. Sometimes it's no. Thank God it's no. We had that whole discussion when I, I told you that I thought I found the one for me. And God showed me later as Wonder Woman, right? Coming down the road. Don't settle for less. Yeah, I'm getting brownie points. But that's the point. To trust him. And so my question, are you ready to sacrifice all of you to him? Because if you are, be prepared. Number one, God's going to love you. And we're going to get to that in a minute. But when you give everything over to God, the second thing I want you to see this morning is sacrificial love will be criticized. When you give your all to him, when you start to worship him, and you start to walk in his ways, and you start to draw towards him, you're going to offend some others. 
Look at 4 and 5. It said, some were there, some, but some were indignantly remarking to one another, why has this perfume been wasted? For this perfume might have been sold for over 300 denarii and money given to the poor, and they were scolding her. When you live for Christ, truly give all your heart to him, and you're going to make others who also know Jesus in particular uncomfortable. When you're fully given over to God, you're going to make, if Jeremy preached on this, I'm calling you out, brother, you're right up here. Being lukewarm, you're going to make all the lukewarm Christians uncomfortable because your all to him is challenging their faith and their stances. When you're pouring out everything to him and you're not giving your leftovers, you're going to make all those that gave their leftovers that felt good about themselves uncomfortable. And these guys started remarking, they, and mainly probably Judas, you got to understand, she wasn't amongst all just a crowd. She's amongst the disciples. The disciples are all standing. These are guys walking around with Jesus. Yes, yeah, Simon and Levery, had, they're, they're all here in this house. So these are guys who are supposed to love and respect Christ. So this wasn't like non-believers. This wasn't the chief priest who became indignant. This was the followers of Jesus becoming indignant with her actions of giving her all. And folks, I'm telling you, when you start truly living... And you start saying, you know what? I'm going to start cutting these things out of my life. I don't step on toes. Because I told you. I was a person that liked all kinds of music. I still even have some CDs, but they used to come out to the guys You know, I liked everything from country music. I liked everything from metal music for working out. And I liked all, I mean, everything. You, you got the gamut. I mean, I, for whatever reason, my taste moved throughout my life from going from Elvis Presley to Motley Crue to, you know, some rappers to country, then to Christian. So I told you, it's all Jesus all the time. Why? Because I don't need that other stuff in my head. I don't need that other stuff challenging me. Some of the lyrics of the other things, number one, they still don't make sense. And we, we, we talked about that. All the great, wonderful verses that are out there. But I want something, especially in my job, I need a, a bubble around me when I'm by myself in my car. I need a hedge of Jesus Christ in there with me because I deal with a lot of other people. Folks, I had to surrender, and it was for me. That was what was holding me back from worshiping God was singing the wrong types of songs, the wrong types of music, and so I had to bring in my own. Now, I found my taste of music in Christ. The unchristian music doesn't all have the bad music. I've got music that I like. i got music that I can work out to. i got music that I can worship to. I've got music from all kinds. I mean, I like everything to a point. But folks, when you give everything over to God, you make other people cringe. You make the lukewarm Christians criticize you because, you know what, they're not living up. They realize they're not giving their all to Christ. And here is somebody that is. When I come across prayer warriors that intimidate me, it makes me feel weak. But it's not their fault. It's because they're spending more time with God than I am, and they've got a stronger relationship with Him than I do. And that's my fault. And that's all of us. If you want to have a strong relationship, it's not that we can't be very close to Christ. We all can be that way. And some of these disciples even became that way, but Mary showed them that they weren't. This display was too much for Judas, for it was after this display, and he was probably the one that said, hey, he probably pointed out since he was the treasurer, of the money of all the disciples as they walked around they gave him the money and he sees this and it's like hey that could have been 300 denarii and then trying to make themselves sacrimonious saying oh we could have given that to the poor see she wasted it on Jesus we could have given it to the poor and I'm here to tell you that if you start to find yourself criticizing the way others worship or you start to find yourself 
criticizing how others are drawing closer to God, or you're starting to criticize that maybe this one is going too far for their faith in Christ, then brother or sister, I say you need to challenge your heart because Satan is finding a way to pull you away. You see, recognizing your sin will pull you too closer to God and to the Bible. But sin will also pull you away from it too. And folks, we need to be giving everything over to him. And if you're starting to criticize how others are worshiping or how others are loving their God or how others are giving over to him, then you need to check yourself and where you stand. And lastly, what I want to point out is that with sacrificial love, it's an act that you give everything over to God. And knowing that when you do give it to God, you know what I, I kind of forgot in there is that when you give everything over to God, you might actually lose some friends because you're going to convict them. It's like, well, I don't want to be around that Jesus freak, that God person. That, that's a little bit too much. They're a little too goody for me. I mean, they don't even use a swear word. That, that's just too much for me. I can't be around that, right? But when you give sacrificially love God, it will be remembered. That's my third point this morning. Sacrificial love will be remembered. Look in 6 through 9. Let her alone, this is Jesus said. Let her alone. Why do you bother her? She has done a good deed for me. He said, for you will always have the poor with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good for them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body before beforehand for burial. Truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be spoken in memory of her. Jesus heard their criticism and rebuked them. Jesus pointed out that worship and love displayed for him will be remembered forever. That People who sell out to God will be mentioned with him. That they will be seen, man, what a man or woman of God she was. What a prayer warrior she was. We've heard that in testimony last year when people time after time came up here. I still remember Sam's testimony about his grandmother and her prayer life. It stuck with me. A woman who gave everything to God to help change her family and to be that that is what will be remembered. When you give everything over to God, you will be something that some other people will talk about. You will be remembered. Dr. Daniel Atkins, he's the president of Southeastern Seminary, he stated this about this. He goes, Mary's sacrificial act, she gave all that she had and did not hold back. She gave her everything, which is what Christ has been preaching all the way up to this point. He said, Give your life over to me and trust me with everything. Love your God with everything. And she did. She didn't hold back. Her act of love became an anointment of his body in preparation. There is nobody else that anointed his body after that. This was it. And it's a strong perfume, which is kind of funny because one of the thoughts I had, the guys are probably criticizing. You know, you have some people that kind of drench themselves like in eternity cologne or whatever. And like, oh, my God, right? So you got this small house full of people and she comes in there with this very strong nard and breaks it. I'm sure she felt the whole house. And you're probably like, man, what you doing? Right? But she anointed Christ preparing him, as he said, for his burial. She anointed his body. And that's what they would do for those that died because, you know, we didn't have embalmers and all this stuff, right? You know, if y'all remember the story of Lazarus, my, one of my favorite quotes in the Bible, especially the, you know, the King James Version, you got Martha when they go to get Lazarus out, and she looks at her Lord and she said, but he stinketh. I like it because you have the F on the end. It's kind of funny. But I've never heard He stinketh. They were afraid to pull him out of the tomb. He'd been lying dead for three days. Oh, Lord, you don't know. He stinketh, right? She anointed him with this strong, expensive perfume which anointed his body and prepared him for what's to come. Now, did Mary have any idea that that's what this perfume was going to do? No. But her act of sacrificial love for Christ will now always, my third, always be remembered for all of history that I'm up here preaching about her this morning, that Mary, her sacrificial love, anointed the Messiah to prepare him 
for the crucifixion. When we give all of ourselves to Jesus, we never know the kingdom impact that we will have. Her selfless act is written in history forever, along with our greatest Savior ever. Because she gave, she wasn't thinking about that. She wanted to anoint her Lord. She wanted to anoint him with everything. Folks, I, I put this quote on your, on your uh, outline. It's one of my favorite quotes from D.L. Moody. And it said, The world has yet to see what God can do with a man or woman fully consecrated to him. And by God's help, I aim to be that man. And I, by prayers, as, as I started today, and I say that we should not be living in fear. That we should not be fearful because what we talked about the last two weeks, Jesus said, you're going to hear rumors of wars and you're going to have plagues and you're going to have all these things. These are signs. These are birth pains for things to come. These are going to come. These are going to come and go. We have several sitting here who have told me they have lived through polio. They've lived through all kinds of other things in this life. And here they are still sitting in this church and they are not afraid. They are here for Jesus Christ only. And folks, that's what all of us should be. We should all be consecrating and putting our whole life for him because if all of us here, even in this little room, one person impacted a kingdom by giving all that she had, she anointed our Savior ready for burial. If we all would just give everything we have to him, we could change the community, the state, the country. I believe it. Folks, I've, I've been watching all this going on. And I don't know if some of y'all have seen it. And I mean, I looked it up because you can't trust everything on Facebook. And it is for real. That even though there's been all these riots in Portland, and even though there's been all this controversy in Portland, do you not know that there's also been an outbreak of salvation in Portland? It's not being put out on the news. I, I saw a little thing on Facebook, but you can't trust Facebook, so I actually did some little research. And it's happening. People are being baptized in the river. People are getting saved. In the midst of chaos and hate, the light of Christ is still going on, and people are being saved because they are not afraid of this evil because Christ said what? I have overcome it. I have overcome it. And that is the hope. That is the message of the gospel that we have. We have the good news. You want to have a change in this world? It's not going to be by laws. It's not going to be by executive orders. It's not going to be by a vote. It's going to be about men and women getting on their knees, praying to God and changing their hearts and loving everybody that God wants them to love and giving their everything over to Him. And that is how you impact the kingdom for God. And we can have another great awakening here because we definitely need it in this country and in this state and in this county that we need to be giving our lives over to Him. And if you have not experienced that this morning, I pray it changed my life when I was 18. I thought I knew Jesus until I met him. I thought I wasn't unworthy, and he brought me to the altar and said, you are now worthy. When I just, there wasn't nothing right enough to give but myself. And I said, Lord, I don't know what you want to have with me, but here I am. I have nothing to offer. And God has truly blessed me. He has truly led me. It hasn't been easy. But he has gotten me here. He got me here. And I'm excited to be here. I got rid of me yet, right? I told Miss Linda I need at least six more years, right? At least. Get carried back through high school, right? And I'll decide something after that. He won't keep me here. But seriously, today is the day to find Christ because he can change your life. If you haven't truly given it over to him, our altar is over. What? open. You can give it, lay it down, say, God, take me. I've, I've been hiding this from you. I've been giving you my leftovers. Today, God, I give you everything. No more holding back from me. I give you everything. Let's all stand for prayer. Lord, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you, Lord, for this moment. I thank you for a heart of a woman who came and anointed you, Lord. I pray that every heart in here can be moved and inspired that this woman will be preached alongside your message here, Lord, that she gave her all to you. Lord, let that be us today. 
Let us surrender all of ourselves to you. Let us give over all of our, our pride, all of anything that is keeping us from you. Lord, let us lay it at the altar and say, God, just use me, Lord, in all the ways that you can. Lord, if they don't know you today, Lord, I pray that they will come forth, Lord, and get to know you. Lord, I thank you. I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Closing the phone. Hello? Hello? Okay, so there was something that um, Ron said today. He said that our the question was, are we giving our all to God? And that made me think, because we're about to sing a song that says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. And there's a part that says, Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will go strangely dim. The things of this world. How can we turn our eyes upon Jesus more on him and less of things in this world? And that's something I want to leave with you guys as to reflect on to chew on. How can we give everything to him and turn our eyes on him more than the things that's holding us down? If you would, sing with me. Turn your eyes upon Jesus and look full in his word.